Hey everyone, welcome back to this $1,400 stimulus check update and third stimulus package update. Today we have some information on a more of a self-imposed deadline that Joe Biden and his administration is now eyeing to get this stimulus package passed by. There's also been some comments from Joe Manchin about his thoughts on whether or not he would actually block either vote yes or no for on this next stimulus plan if it includes the $15 per hour minimum wage. We're going to talk about what he said and what that could mean. Also, the latest information just came out on the impacts of the $600 stimulus checks that were sent out in January from the last round of stimulus, most of which has now entered the economy. So I have some numbers in terms of what was boosted from those $600 checks. Hey everyone, my name is Randy and welcome to the Late Night Grind. Right now on this channel, I am covering the state of our stimulus checks, basically a series covering all these updates, um, what's happening with the stimulus packages and what's gonna mean for our finances, for our economy, things like that. So if you are new to the channel, uh, please consider subscribing. All you gotta do is click that subscribe button and also don't forget to tap that bell notification icon. That will actually notify you when I release a new video, which I do when I get new information. So if you wanna support this YouTube channel, best thing that you can do is on this video is give it a like, give it a big thumbs up and it really helps out with that YouTube algorithm. So if you do that, I would greatly appreciate it. All right guys, well, let's get into it. So retail sales numbers have just just come out for the month of January and it basically exploded. And this is exactly what Congress was hoping for. When they do things like stimulus or, or send out money in the form of stimulus checks, as I've been saying on these videos, uh, you know, over the course of the last couple of months, this stimulus money is really supposed to be to help the economy overall, not just help people pay their pay some bills that they've been backed up on. Even though it seems to be transforming from stimulus language to relief language, the money that has gone out is now hitting the economy. So these numbers that I'm gonna share, they're honestly really good news for the economy overall. Considering during the same month, unemployment, uh, the unemployment rate, I should say, basically stagnated. Didn't drop too much lower as expected. Um, but here, I'll just, I'll just go over some of the numbers. Um, overall, retail sales jumped by 5.3%, which is actually well ahead of what the markets predicted it would do. Um, their prediction was around 1% to 1.2% of an increase. Um, but 5.3, that's uh, that's shattering that expectation. And pretty much across every major category saw a big increase. But overall, sales rose 5.9% after the $900 billion stimulus package that was passed in late December uh, actually went out. Uh, so those $600 checks went to, uh, went to individuals, families, and they basically started spending. Uh, electronics and appliances actually saw the biggest increase up 14.7% for the month. Uh, while furniture and home furnishings were also up 12%. And I think that category may have also seen a boost from the recent home sales spike that happened uh, in 2020 because of the rates being astronomically low. Houses were going, it was basically a bidding war in the real estate market. Uh, so, you know, it makes sense that home, that uh, furniture and home furnishings would kind of go along with it. Uh, but even food and drink establishments saw, saw a 6.9% rise in spending. I think some of this is due to the fact that they're, they're adapting a little bit more to the, basically the takeout culture that is now happening, even though unemployment remains extremely, extremely high in the food and hospitality sector overall. With bars and restaurants taking the brunt of that and with sales being down 16.6%, percent overall. The other interesting thing was that clothing and accessories were down 11%. Um, this is probably due to the a lot less in-store shopping going on, more online shopping going on. And typically when you're at a store, there's going to be more, there's going to be more purchases, especially on things like clothing and accessories, because you buy one thing and you buy something else to match it or that goes with it. When you're shopping online, it doesn't quite happen as much. Speaking of online shopping, it was the biggest gainer since the pandemic began. Obviously we could, Obviously, we could see that coming. Um, up overall 28.7%. Now, online spending was already multi trillion dollars, and in one year saw a 28.7% increase. That's unbelievable. Building materials rose 19%. Again, I think that kind of goes along with the housing market. Sporting goods increased 22.5%, 22.5%. This is when a lot of Schools, uh, high schools and colleges basically canceled entire seasons or at least shrunk them down. Sporting goods is a very broad category. And I think the thing that's actually bolstering this the most is the fact that um, when kids aren't going to, aren't going near as many places, basically families just went out and bought stuff for their kids to play. Um, I think that includes probably pools and different recreational activities. If since they can't play sports at school, maybe they their parents bought them more of that stuff so they could play at home. So I guess that would kind of be the transition uh, because to me, I just saw sporting goods would be something that dropped, but it didn't. And so when you go over all these numbers, uh, to me, it really doesn't back up what some of the economists were saying was the cause for the whole GameStop stock short 
short squeeze. And if you're not familiar with that, it's basically where hedge, front, hedge funds were betting against this stock to fall and retail investors, cash buyers, people on Reddit is where it really began, uh, said, mm, said, no, we're going to start buying this stock like crazy um, just to kind of teach them a lesson. And the stock price went through the roof. The hedge funds came back and said, this is just what happens when too much stimulus is flooding the market. People have too much money on their hands. So they just go uh, betting. So they just go gambling on the stock market on something like a on something like a stock that they knew nothing about. Well, so I think numbers like this tend to refute that. Um, because the study that I read said most of the checks were spent within 10 days of people receiving it. And when you look at the retail sales increase this much, uh, I, I think that kind of refutes that. And with that said, we have another round of stimulus coming, most likely within the next month. And so here's the deadline. This is kind of a self-imposed deadline, but on March 14th, unemployment benefit extension, unemployment and benefit insurance will actually end. And so what they're doing is they're trying to have this thing passed and signed into law before that date. Joe Biden has said he needs to get it signed into law before the date. Nancy Pelosi thinks it can actually happen. Um, she, he, she had actually hoped it would happen before the end of February. It's, it's more likely that this is going to happen sometime in the first two weeks of March. As it stands right now, the unveiling of all the details on the plan are going to happen soon, most likely Monday, um, which the House of Representatives will then have a vote. It will go to the Senate and have a vote as well. Democrat Joe Manchin has said he is not in favor of the $15 an hour minimum wage hike during the pandemic. He's also backed up by another Democratic Senator, Kristen Sinema, who has also said she's not gonna vote for the bill that has stuff in it, has nothing to do with the uh, the pandemic and the economic issues. Well, recently Joe Manchin said uh, he's only gonna vote for something if it's considered allowed to go through the reconciliation process. The $15 per hour minimum wage hike was up for debate basically, as to whether it was uh, legally uh, legally allowed to go through the reconciliation process, it doesn't necessarily involve government spending or government budgets. If it is found that it is, Joe Manchin said he could likely vote for it. If it's not, then he will not vote for it. So that eliminates one roadblock for Democrats, but one more just showed up in Kristen Cinema. We'll see what she has to say about it. So the numbers that I read off, those were from those were from the results of $600 per person stimulus sent out. Well, we're on the verge of having $1,400 per person sent out to the country, um, essentially more than double what we saw in January. So not only that, people are gonna be getting some tax refunds back. So when you combine the spending from the stimulus plan and the spending from the tax returns, we could be seeing unbelievable numbers in the economy overall, but here's the thing, the economy has to be able to open up fully. When there's too many restrictions in place, that essentially restricts the flow of money, and it also hurts the unemployment rate. And then you also have things like school opening, where Dr. Fauci came out and basically said he doesn't think schools should be open until this stimulus package passes because it has $170 billion earmarked for schools, universities, uh, to help open them up safely. Um, here's the thing. Uh, at least where I live, a lot of the school a lot of the school districts around here have actually voted, and they're sending their kids back to school five days a week in in person in class. I imagine that's going on all over the country in various different places. Probably not in major cities, as I'm a little more out in the country, but but in any case, that is going on. But even Joe Biden said he would love to have schools open five days a week, but didn't think it would happen until late next year or possibly now even Christmas. The country doesn't seem to be waiting for Congress on that one. They are making their own calls. And so now we wait on the $1,400 stimulus checks, the $300 per month child tax credit checks, as well as the $400 per week unemployment insurance boost to those on unemployment, as well as all the other money that they want to pump into our economy. Let me know in the comments below when you guys think this will be passed. Do you think March 14th, is that a fair deadline? Do you think it would be passed for then or do you think it will be kicked down the road a little bit and not passed until after. All right, guys, well, thanks for watching this video. I really appreciate it. And don't forget to give it a big thumbs up. This channel is basically a couple of months old since, since I started posting regularly, and we're very close to that 20,000 subscriber mark. So if you'd like to help out, uh, this channel get there please click that subscribe button i would love to have you join this community it's a very active community just check out the comments below and some of the polls that i have on my community tab i'd love to have you and until next time guys i'll see you on the next video